Hey everyone, welcome back to Intro to DJing. In this video, what I'm gonna do is show you how to set beat grids on tracks where the beat grid changes. So these can be called dynamic or flexible beat grids. And as an example, I have this track here. This is Twerk. This is a transition track. So it goes from 128 beats per minute. I'll go ahead and play it. So this would be something as a DJ you would play to go from 128 beats per minute to 95. So you can see it goes from 128 to 95 beats per minute. So the way we create the grid on this is first what I'm gonna do is like before, we're gonna click on the edit grid. And the first thing you wanna do is of course, set your beat grid for the initial starting point. So once again, what I'm gonna do is set my down beat here, kaboom, and then make sure we've done it well for this section. So what I can do is go back and just make sure that the phase and everything and that the tempo itself is lined up. We can use these buttons to kind of line it up and sure enough, this here is 128. Then what I often do is I try to find the point where the tempo starts changing and I set another beat marker. So this is that point. So I'm gonna just go ahead and set it. And what's gonna happen is it's going to start recognizing that the tempo changes. So in this section, I don't really grid it. I'm just using this to mark off the sections. And then what I'm gonna do is set the marker when I expect the tempo to have been changed to the new point. So at this point, I think it's pretty much completely into the new track, so I'm gonna set it at this point. Notice how it, it thinks it knows what the tempo is here, but it's getting confused. That's okay, because we won't be using anything in this point. And then at this point, it'll be at the new beat grid. So what I'm gonna do is just kinda count basically a few beats. One, two, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That's where it needs to end. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that I have this thing basically stretched so that we have eight beats to this point. So the marker here is, it says 14. So let's find out where the, where we expect there to be two. I, I usually do this in eight beats. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is where 16 should be because 16, that's the number of bars. So we're just gonna go ahead and move it so that we have eight beats or two bars, so 14 to 16. And sure enough, as you notice, as we're doing this, it's going to move it over to about 95. Um, that's pretty close, but what I often find that's helpful is going to the end of the track and just making sure the end part is lined up. So this is where we want this, this beat, that's its own beat, this is where the outro sort of starts. So what I'm gonna do is just adjust the beat grid this way and looking at where these other ones are. And sure enough, that brings us here to 95. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And now what I've done is set the beat grid so the beat grid itself goes from 128 to 95. Now, once you've done this, if you're using a track like this, it can be very, what's the word? Dangerous to sync this to another track because if you sync this it's going to basically flatten out the BPM to the to whatever track you're mixing in So if I was for instance mixing in a track at 128 it would sound good here at the beginning if I synced it Let's go ahead and just play it at this part where the outro is But the outro So with these transition tracks, what's really important, if you're using sync, use sync to get the track mixed in, but then be sure to turn the sync off here so that the track can actually change tempo. And then if you wanna mix in something else, you can turn sync back on so that you know, you're actually mixing in at the actual tempo that you want it to. That way it's not, because otherwise if you have sync on while you're playing a track, it's going to adjust the whole track, including the, the slower parts up to that initial tempo, which often the audience is not going to be happy with. So just be careful um, and, and that's one way you can do it. Once you like it, just click save and you will save your elastic beat grid or your updated beat grid where you've set these markers. And now you have a whole track gridded the way you would want it to. So hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.